Mars is trying to kill you. No air, no protection from radiation. Gravity that slowly breaks your body. One mistake and you're dead. Yet we keep calling it humanity's future. Meanwhile, nearly a billion miles farther out, there's a world with a thick atmosphere, natural radiation shielding, rivers, lakes, and oceans, a place where humans might actually survive. So why are we obsessed with Mars? When Titan checks almost every box we need, let's find out. Mars looks like the obvious choice. It's relatively close, about six months away with current technology. It has ice at the poles, ancient river valleys, and dirt you could theoretically grow plants in. But here's what nobody likes to talk about. Mars is almost a death sentence. The atmosphere is less than 1% the pressure of Earth's. Step outside without a pressure suit, and the liquids in your body, saliva, tears, the moisture in your lungs, would literally boil. One NASA report described a survivor of rapid decompression, remembering the water on his tongue beginning to boil before losing consciousness. Then there's the radiation. Mars has no magnetic field and barely any atmosphere to shield you from cosmic rays, high energy particles from distant exploding stars that tear through your DNA. Studies show that even a short Mars mission would expose astronauts to dangerous levels. Long term, you'd probably need to live underground just to survive. And even if you solve those problems, Mars's gravity is only 38% of Earth's. We don't know if that's enough to prevent bone loss, muscle atrophy, and the other health issues astronauts face in low gravity. We've never tested it. Mars is interesting scientifically. It might have once had life, but as a home, it's a harsh, radiation-soaked desert with an atmosphere so thin it might as well not exist. Now consider a different possibility, one that changes everything we thought we knew about where humans could actually thrive. Titan is Saturn's largest moon, bigger than the planet Mercury, and it's the only moon in the solar system with a thick atmosphere. Not a wispy trace of gas, but a real atmosphere, 1.5 times the pressure at Earth's surface, and about four times denser than ours. That means something radical. On Titan, you wouldn't need a bulky pressure suit, just insulation against the cold and a respirator for oxygen. The atmosphere does the hard work of keeping you pressurized, but the real gift is protection. Titan's thick atmosphere blocks the cosmic rays that would slowly destroy you on Mars. Those deadly particles that penetrate Mars's thin air, they can't make it through Titan's orange haze. You could walk on the surface or even live there without the constant threat of radiation tearing apart your cells. Planetary scientist Amanda Hendricks puts it bluntly, for long-term destinations, Mars is just not a very good place. She argues that Titan offers something Mars never will, a genuinely safe environment for humans. Go to Mars, check it out, and come back, she says. But for a permanent home, Titan offers much more opportunity. Beyond protection, Titan holds another extraordinary secret that sets it apart from every other world we've discovered. It has weather. Titan is the only other world in the solar system with stable liquids on its surface. Lakes, seas, rivers, a complete hydrological cycle, just like Earth's. Except instead of water, it's liquid methane and ethane raining from the clouds. The surface temperature is minus 290 degrees Fahrenheit. Water ice is as hard as rock. But that frigid cold creates something unexpected, an environment that mirrors early Earth in eerie ways. Titan's atmosphere is 95% nitrogen, just like Earth's was billions of years ago, before oxygen-producing life took over. 
Its orange haze resembles what scientists think Earth might have looked like when microbes first emerged. And the complex organic chemistry happening in Titan's atmosphere, nitrogen and methane breaking apart under sunlight and recombining into carbon-rich compounds, could be similar to the chemistry that eventually led to life here. Titan even has geology. Dunes stretch across its equator. Not sand, but dark hydrocarbon particles that look like coffee grounds. Ancient riverbeds carved through landscapes of water ice. And beneath the surface, there's evidence of a subsurface ocean of liquid water mixed with ammonia. It's alien, but it's also strangely familiar. The practical advantages become even more compelling when you consider what Titan offers for long-term survival. Data from NASA's Cassini probe found that Titan has hundreds of times more liquid hydrocarbons than all known oil and gas reserves on Earth. These methane and ethane lakes aren't just sitting there, they're a ready-made energy source. You could burn methane for power if you brought a combustion source. You could use chemical reactions like treating acetylene with hydrogen. You could deploy wind turbines in Titan's dense atmosphere. Winds at higher altitudes are strong enough that airborne turbines could generate hundreds of megawatts. The estimate suggests that covering just 10% of Titan's surface with solar arrays could power a population the size of the United States. And here's a wild bonus. Titan's low gravity and thick atmosphere mean flying is ridiculously easy. A human could strap on wings and fly under their own power. Building aircraft or drones would be simple. You could explore the moon like nowhere else in the solar system. But extracting and using that energy would mean building and maintaining massive industrial systems in temperatures colder than Antarctica, where a single mechanical failure could shut everything down. The challenges are real, but they're fundamentally different from what Mars presents. So if Titan sounds this promising, there's one question that deserves an honest answer. Why isn't everyone racing to get there? Distance. Mars is six months away. Titan, seven years with current propulsion. That's the time it took Cassini to reach Saturn. And Cassini didn't have fragile humans aboard dealing with radiation exposure, muscle loss, and psychological strain. To make Titan viable, we'd need propulsion technology that doesn't exist yet. Something that could cut that travel time to under a year. Nuclear propulsion, maybe. Or more speculative options like quantum thrusters. Without that breakthrough, getting to Titan is a non-starter. And then there's gravity. Titan's is only 14% of Earth's, slightly less than the Moon. Could humans reproduce there? Raise children? We have no idea. No one's ever tested long-term development in low gravity. It's entirely possible that people born on Titan couldn't survive Earth's gravity if they ever visited. The cold is brutal, too. Every structure, every vehicle, every piece of equipment would need heating systems that don't fail. One malfunction, and you're dead in minutes. Let's imagine we've made the breakthrough. You've traveled to Titan in under a year. And now you're stepping onto the surface of humanity's potential new home. What happens next? You'd need habitats that can handle minus 290 degrees Fahrenheit while keeping the inside warm and livable. You'd need to extract water ice from the surface, which is rock hard at those temperatures, and melt it for drinking and oxygen production. You'd need to grow food probably using artificial light since Titan gets only about 1% of the sunlight Earth does. You'd also need a plan for reproduction and child development in low gravity, which we know absolutely nothing about. Maybe weighted clothing helps. Maybe artificial gravity via rotating structures. Maybe it's just impossible. But here's the thing. These are solvable problems. Hard problems, yes but solvable with enough research and investment. The radiation problem on Mars, 
That's physics. You can't negotiate with cosmic rays. You either shield yourself, likely by living underground, or you accept the damage. Titan's challenges are engineering problems. Mars's challenges are existential ones. NASA's current plan focuses on Mars because it fits within existing budgets and technology timelines. Going to Mars by the 2030s is ambitious but achievable. Titan is a multi-generational project. But here's what we need to understand. Mars gets us off Earth. Titan gives us a future. It's a place we might actually live. Thick atmosphere, abundant resources, and protection from radiation make it the closest thing to a second Earth we've found. It won't be easy. It won't be soon. But if we're planning for the long-term survival of our species, Titan might be the place that makes sense. Mars is loud, red, obvious. Titan is quiet, hidden, patient. Mars is the stepping stone. Titan is the destination. If you're curious about the future of space exploration and what humanity will look like scattered across the solar system, hit subscribe. We're just getting started. And trust me, the universe has plenty more surprises waiting for us out there.